Test A. Test 1. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Share this letter on your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Fine. The word I read was F-I-N-E. Fine. So the correct answer for example 1 is B. This is recorded by shade and space B against number 1. Example 2. Blaze. The word I read was B-L-A-Z-E. Blaze. So the correct answer for example 2 is C. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 1 on your answer sheet. Start at number 1. Number 1. Fret. Number two, stack. Number three, peers. Number four, peep. Number five, fire. Number six, hurt. Number seven, chair. Number eight, pet. Number nine, home. Number ten, mine. Test two. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Share this letter in your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Seeds. The word I read was S-E-E-D-S. Seeds. So the correct answer for example 1 is B. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space B against number 1. Example 2. Lark. The word I read was L-A-R-K, lark. So the correct answer for example 2 is C. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space C against number 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 2 on your answer sheet. Start at number 11. Number 11. Burn. Number 12. Use Number 13 Charm Number 14 Yuck Number 15 Shop Number 16 Chip Number 17, just. Number 18, patch. Number 19, Jew. Number 20, device. Test 3. Listen carefully. In this test, there are four words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Share this letter in your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Stock. The word I read was S-T-O-C-K. Stock. So the correct answer is A. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space A against number 1. Example 2. Court. The word I read was C-O-U-R-T. Court. So the correct answer is B. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space B against number 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 3 on your answer sheet. Start at number 21. Number 21. Tour. 
Number 22. Good. Number 23. Grieve. Number 24. This. Number 25. Which. Number 26. Port. Number 27. Hop. Test 4. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three sentences in each group. I'm going to read one sentence from each group. Beside the sentence I read, there is a letter. Share this letter on your answer sheet. Here are two examples. It was a cart. The sentence I read was B. It was a cart. So the correct answer for example 1 is B. This is recorded by shade and answer space B against example 1. Example 2. This team has power. The sentence I read was A. This team has power. So the correct answer for example 2 is A. This is recorded by shade and answer space A against example 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test A on your answer sheet. Start at number 28. Number 28. She said blade. Number 29. I saw a bird. Number 30. He spelled tongue. Number 31. It is a cat. Number 32. He said laid. Number 33. He wanted to see adverse. Number 34. It was held. Test 5. In this test, the word that you will hear on the tape does not appear on your word list. That word only rhymes with one of the words on the list. Listen to this word, find. Which of the four words in example one rhymes with find? The correct answer is rhymed. The other words do not rhyme with find. The letter written against rhymed is B, and this is recorded by shade and answer space B against example one. Example two. Listen to this word. Tent. Which one of the four words in example two rhymes with tent? The correct word is sent. The other words do not rhyme with sent. The letter written against sent is A, and this is recorded by shade and answer space A against example two. Now get ready to answer the rest of test five on your answer sheet. Start at number 35. Number 35. Fight. Number 36. Killed. Number 37. Chase. Number 38. Praise. Number 39. Bile. Number 40. Next. Number 41. Sip. Number 42. Hat. Test 6. You are now going to hear some questions and answers. The questions will all be different and the answer is always the same. You have to choose the one question which goes with the repeated answer. Here are two examples. Example 1. Who borrowed your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. Did he borrow your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. Did he steal your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. The correct answer is C. Because he borrowed my newspaper answers the question, Did he steal your newspaper? This is recorded by Shaden Answer Space C against number 1. Example 2. What is the capital of Britain? 
London is the capital of Britain. Is London the capital of Britain? London is the capital of Britain. What country is London the capital of? London is the capital of Britain. The correct answer is A, because London is the capital of Britain answers the question, what is the capital of Britain? This is recorded by Shaden Answer Space A against number 2. In the test which follows, you will hear only the answers. The questions will not be read. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 6 on your answer sheet. Start at number 43. Number 43. He bought a book. Number 44. John works all day. Number 45. Esther came here yesterday. Number 46. Kwame loved Philippa. Number 47. She scored a point. Number 48. Smith married last year. Number 49. He watched the video show. Number 50. Osei loves playing with beautiful ladies. Number 51. They were hungry. Number 52. She stole a laptop. Test 7. You are now going to hear some short conversations. After each conversation, read the three statements on your question paper and decide which of them is correct. Share the appropriate space on your answer sheet. Here is an example. He said the exercise was well done. That's what he said. Both are doubtful as to whether the exercise was well done. The correct answer is, therefore, statement C. This is recorded by Shaden Answer Space C. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 7 on your answer sheet. Start at number 53. Number 53. Look, it's a plane crash. That isn't my problem. Would you care for some water? I'm okay, thank you. The rains will come today. Yes, I will not be surprised if it rains today. It is cloudy. They say his sky is beautiful. That's what they say. Test 8. You are now going to hear a short conversation between two speakers, a man and a woman, and a narrative. Both the conversation and the narrative will be played to you twice. Immediately after hearing each of them, you will be asked two questions. From your question paper, decide on the correct answers. On your answer sheet, shade the space of the appropriate letter. There are no examples for this test. Therefore, get ready to start at number 57. I have thought seriously about it for long. Why do some people have to be condemned to the abbeys of penury no matter how persistently they struggle against poverty? Come to think of it, there are so many physically agile men, well-educated, with robust health who eternally languish in penury's dark cell. And yet, there are others who, for doing next to nothing, without taxing either their minds or bodies much, remain darlings of the goddess of wealth. In all my years of searching for an explanation, I have only a very weak solution. Most men who are condemned to the chasm of destitution have their parentage to blame. This first factor is perhaps the harshest in deciding where a person belongs. To be born into a family of appallingly poor parents is to have to wage a losing battle against many wicked enemies. There's malnutrition to contend with and then comes illiteracy or poor education. With poor feeding and ignorance forever trailing one, diseases soon catch up. And with these foes forever near, a serious pursuit of a meaningful profession can be ruled out. One has fallen into the class of hewers of wood. Then there is the factor of making a choice. Watch it. That man who appears to be an incurable fellow at work may not be lazy, may indeed be zealously hard-working. 
His crime may be that he is in the wrong profession. He made the wrong choice. Some men are destined to be engineers but went into music. Some destined to be teachers veered into medicine. Once such a man becomes fully trained in the profession, he cannot beat a retreat, and he remains a hapless mediocrity in that profession. Then, there's also the factor of the choice of associates. One cannot choose one's parents, but one can choose a wife, friends, business associates, and the like. This is where the mystery lies. You can make a choice, but cannot know in advance exactly how your choice will treat you. To choose a devil for a wife is to be sentenced to lifelong anguish. The association will color every aspect of one's life endeavors, from education and social life to business, and to be yoked with an incurable fraud as a business partner may bring one down for life. Listen to the conversation again. I have thought seriously about it for long. Why do some people have to be condemned to the abbeys of penury, no matter how persistently they struggle against poverty? Come to think of it, there are so many physically agile men, well-educated, with robust health who eternally languish in penury's dark cell. And yet, there are others who, for doing next to nothing, without taxing either their minds or bodies much, remain darlings of the goddess of wealth. In all my years of searching for an explanation, I have only a very weak solution. Most men who are condemned to the chasm of destitution have their parentage to blame. This first factor is perhaps the harshest in deciding where a person belongs. To be born into a family of appallingly poor parents is to have to wage a losing battle against many wicked enemies. There's malnutrition to contend with and then comes illiteracy or poor education. With poor feeding and ignorance forever trailing one, diseases soon catch up. And with these foes forever near, a serious pursuit of a meaningful profession can be ruled out. One has fallen into the class of hewers of wood. Then there is the factor of making a choice. Watch it. That man who appears to be an incurable fellow at work may not be lazy, may indeed be zealously hard-working. His crime may be that he is in the wrong profession. He made the wrong choice. Some men are destined to be engineers but went into music. Some destined to be teachers veered into medicine. Once such a man becomes fully trained in the profession, he cannot beat a retreat, and he remains a hapless mediocrity in that profession. Then, there's also the factor of the choice of associates. One cannot choose one's parents, but one can choose a wife, friends, business associates, and the like. This is where the mystery lies. You can make a choice, but cannot know in advance exactly how your choice will treat you. To choose a devil for a wife is to be sentenced to lifelong anguish. The association will color every aspect of one's life endeavors, from education and social life to business, and to be yoked with an incurable fraud as a business partner may bring one down for life. Number 57. From the conversation, which of the following is not a reason why men are poor? Number 58. According to the conversation, the narrative. The food and oil crisis demonstrate the extent of our interdependence. Many developing nations need a food surplus of the few developed nations, and many industrialized nations need the oil production of a few developing nations. Energy is required to produce food and food to produce energy and both to provide a decent life for everyone. The problems of food and energy can be resolved on the basis of cooperation or can, as you say, be made unmanageable on the basis of confrontation. Runaway inflation propelled by food and oil price increases is an early warning signal. Let us not delude ourselves. Failure to cooperate on oil, food and inflation could spell disaster for every nation. The United Nations must not and need not allow this to occur. A global strategy for food and energy is urgently required. It is my belief that some principles should guide a global approach. First of all, all nations must substantially increase production. Yes, to maintain the present standards of living, the world must almost double its output of food and energy to match the expected increase in the world population by the end of the century. To meet aspirations for a better life, 
production will have to expand at a significantly faster rate than the population growth. Besides, all nations must seek to achieve a level of prices which not only provides an incentive to producers but which consumers can also afford. It should now be clear that the developed nations are not the only countries which demand and receive adequate returns for their goods, but it should also be clear that by confronting consumers with production restrictions, artificial pricing and the prospect of ultimate bankruptcy, producers will eventually become victims of their own actions. Now listen to the narrative again. The food and oil crisis demonstrate the extent of our interdependence. Many developing nations need a food surplus of the few developed nations and many industrialized nations need the oil production of a few developing nations. Energy is required to produce food and food to produce energy and both to provide a decent life for everyone. The problems of food and energy can be resolved on the basis of cooperation or can, as you say, be made unmanageable on the basis of confrontation. Runaway inflation propelled by food and oil price increases is an early warning signal. Let us not delude ourselves. Failure to cooperate on oil, food and inflation could spell disaster for every nation. The United Nations must not and need not allow this to occur. A global strategy for food and energy is urgently required. It is my belief that some principles should guide a global approach. First of all, all nations must substantially increase production. Just to maintain the present standards of living, the world must almost double its output of food and energy to match the expected increase in the world population by the end of the century. To meet aspirations for a better life, production will have to expand at a significantly faster rate than the population growth. Besides, all nations must seek to achieve a level of prices which not only provides an incentive to producers but which consumers can also afford. It should now be clear that the developed nations are not the only countries which demand and receive adequate returns for their goods, but it should also be clear that by confronting consumers with production restrictions, artificial pricing and the prospect of ultimate bankruptcy, producers will eventually become victims of their own actions. Number 59 According to the narrative, Number 60. According to the narrative, which of the following is not a principle to do with the global crisis of food and energy? 